had me from the start by the way you said the way you wrote up for me yeah yeah man i felt your energy wasn't used to being loved and treated differently yeah but something went wrong the signals got crossed and now when I hear the phrase soul love for the single sister, I think about all of us ladies who are not yet married, who haven't met the right partner or, you know, the right relationship hasn't worked out or we haven't found someone who we feel like we're equally yoked with, um, but still have that deep desire to be partnered. Um, I think it's about self-love first. I think it's about being okay with where we are at this time in our lives. I actually had a really good friend of mine send me a clip this morning on social media, and it was a pastor who was saying, if we are judging our lives by where we think we should be at a given time, uh, we should rephrase that. We should say instead, am I being faithful with what God gave me today? So when I hear soul love for the single sister, I think about you know, just reframing whatever I thought I was supposed to be doing and in changing that into, am I being faithful with what God gave me today? Hello, ladies. What do I hear when someone says, soul for the single lady? Well, that's me. I have a full soul with God's grace and mercy, number one. And do I miss the company of an amazing man? Absolutely. So what that said is, um, at this point in my life, I guess I'm waiting on God to bring me that man. Of course, yeah, I'm out there looking, but you know, hey, it ain't happened yet. And um, I have a full life with um, the company of my friends and my family. I just lost my two amazing poodles within three months of, of each other. I had them for 12 years. That's a big loss, but it's okay. Um, you know, I have so many things to fulfill my soul in this life. If Mr. Wright doesn't come through, I'm good. But um, I love taking care of me, my pampering, sleeping by myself, uh, doing what I want to do when I want to do. That's so important to me. So I have a full soul. When I, what comes to mind, soul love for the single sisters, I think of Black love. I think of that commitment and the sharing that you want to have with an African-American male. I'm not discounting any other race, but initially I want to see that soul love with between sisters and African-American men. And I feel like so many times they take us for granted and they discount us. But me, soul love, it's whatever I can do to support that individual and they, that individual could support me or um, share with me. I think of the Shirley and Bernard Kinsey's. This was a uh, African-American couple. They met in college when you met men in college in the 60s. And they are still together today. They built an empire together, spent one paycheck, saved the other, and traveled the world and collected African-American art and historical facts for the world, for all of us to see. They started with their own soul love. And it just, it, and, and for the single sisters, that's the kind of love I would like for us to get. Soul love for the single sister to me means loving myself first, loving who I am, my lips, my hair, my face on good days and on what other people think is bad days because on the inside, I feel fantastic. So for the single sister, it means that I can get up and go wherever I want to go with the crew or by myself because I love myself. I love who I am. I love the woman that God has blessed me to become, who I have worked and forged to become. So love means that I'm loving my inside and that inside makes the outside fantastic, makes her great. So love to me means that everyone sees or I hope they see the light. And if they don't see it, their opinion of me is none of my business because I love who I am. I love who I've become. I love the path that I can look back on and the one that I can look to the forward to see. Soul love, it's all of me.
Hi, I'm Leslie Pogue, founder of LP Speak, author and the creator of the Habit of Happy Process to Manage Your Life. Hi there, and I'm Dr. Sherry Y. Smith, owner and creator of the personal finance website, a life of financialfreedom.com. That's where I seek to empower women in learning about personal finance and building wealth. I'm the creator of the Love and Relationship Expo some years ago called It's a Love Thing and a singles magazine that I created at that time called Assorted Chocolates. I am a single mother, a proud Delta, an author, and a woman that loves riding her Harley motorcycle. Welcome to today's topic on soul love for the single sister. You just saw some of the single sisters that we've asked that topic. What do you think about when you think about soul love for the single sister? For myself, when I hear the words soul love, before I even intertwine the words single sister with it, it conjures up in my mind a romantic, heartfelt interlude with my emotions. When I add the words single sister so that we get soul love for the single sister, I feel it reflects self-care for myself and totally loving myself as a single woman. Because we all know that in order to love others, we really need to be loving ourselves first. And that's a place that we often miss the mark. And what about you, Leslie? What comes to mind when you hear soul love for the single sister? <laughs> well, when I hear soul love for the single sister, I, I think about hearing our own truth. So often we don't, we're not ready to hear our own truth and then acknowledge the feelings we have around that because either we're just not ready to admit it, um, we're not ready to be honest. But the truth is, is I think about hearing that truth and just realizing that I don't have to share it with anybody, but I have to be honest with myself because if I can't be honest with myself, to your point, I can't give away love. I can't, I can't even receive love because there's no space for it. So when you think about soul love, you got to get down into your soul and get to it. So by hearing your own truth and just being honest with yourself, even if that makes you cry or fuss or yell or whatever, then just be honest with yourself and then acknowledge that truth. And then from there, you can move on to be, have the tools to be able to give that love. Now, that all sounds good, but let's dig a little deeper because when I think of soul love, I also think about taking it deep and pretty and <laughs> hard and smothering yourself with it, just loving on yourself. And then eventually hoping we're loving others. And you're speaking a lot about the truth. What are you... What are you saying when you say the truth, when we have to find the truth? Break that down a little bit for me. Okay. Uh, when you are finding your own truth, you're being honest about the things, like you said, the gritty stuff, actually, the stuff that isn't working. The stuff that's working, that's a no-brainer. It's done, it's handled, it's doing its thing. But the stuff that isn't working, but the stuff that isn't working that you're covering up with makeup, <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> putting makeup on a pig. You don't want to do that. And that's the stuff that's deep down. It's the stuff you're not admitting. So maybe in your relate, maybe in your friendships, you know, everyone or a handful of people are talking about how wonderful their marriage is and all this. And maybe yours is not what you want it to be, but you don't want to share that with them. So it's, oh yeah, we're this and we do that and we're together. But deep down in your truth mm -hmm. you know that there are areas there are things that either both of you your partner yourself whoever can adjust but you're not quite ready to admit that but by going deep into that truth by going into your soul you acknowledge the reality of what's happening and by acknowledging the reality of what's happening 
you're making changes based on your actual reality. If you keep making changes and adjusting based on the false reality that you're portraying out to the world, mm -hmm. then it's, it's like building, building on sand. It's not going to be sustainable. But if you dig down into that truth, mm -hmm. then that's when you can really peel away the junk and be able to start growing and building and, and actually nurturing your soul so that you're strong enough to get to the next level and share and build and grow from there. So if I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying, if I jump in there a little bit more, you're saying that to know your own truth, you don't necessarily yes. have to share it with anyone. Absolutely and, not. And I like when you say somebody might say, for instance, oh, my marriage is lovely and all. Do not get hung up in living or wanting a life like somebody else has. Correct. It is not always what you think. Correct. So that's a part of your truth, except yes. how things are for you and working on it. Now, exactly. I feel that soul love is also the greatest connection you can have with yourself and a person you love. So we're, we're talking about soul love for the single sister, but you know, so many of us want to be in a relationship as well, but you, you got to know your, find your truth. Like you just said, exactly. Know and know your truth. Yes. One of the big things that I believe also is that self-care plays a part in soul love for the single sister. We have got to learn to be good to ourselves yes if there's something you wouldn't say to a person you don't know or to a stranger don't say it to yourself exactly it's so hurtful when other people when you say or when you when you use words that you wouldn't use to yourself like you want to make sure that not only are you i guess teaching other people how to treat you but also it starts with how you talk about yourself. You know, you don't want to tell yourself that you're stupid or you're fat mm -hmm. or you're lazy or it's, this is a waste of time and space. That, that, this, that verbiage, it's like, it's like a horror movie. It just sits there in your space and it's just, it's just giving you bad food. I mean, it's just, it's just bad nourishment. You want to use words because words mean something. And so you want to use the words that actually build you up. Because even if you are kind of thinking, although the universe can hear what you're thinking, but even if you're thinking that other stuff, then instantly counter it. You know what? I'm fat, but my curves are awesome. Yeah. I need to lose some weight, but today I did this, that, and the other thing. You know, whatever it is to get you in the habit, because it's easy, You there are a million articles that tell you you know, mm -hmm. that your curves are okay and now you should love this and this and that. But mm -hmm. if you aren't yourself in that mental space to believe it, which so often we aren't for whatever reason, because the reasons I could throw out there are a whole other seminar. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you are not in the space to believe it, then mm -hmm. start from where you do believe. You know, start from the things you know to be true. And that's the best tool to mm -hmm. use what do i know to be true okay yes i'm fat but i look great in that blue dress that's hanging in my closet yes i'm lazy sometimes but i take care of my kids and i take them to school and i baked for the bake sale last week and i always make it to church every sunday so even if you catch yourself using the negative verbiage mm -hmm. throw in Mm -hmm. something positive that you know to be true to get yourself into the habit of reminding yourself of all the amazing things that you do actually already do and while you're drawing in those positive things throw out those negativities they don't have to be yes. a part of your reality they don't yeah they don't and and it might take a minute might, you might have to slowly sift them out but get them out yes get them get them gone and another thing I want to <laughs> emphasize is that people treat us the way that we allow them to treat us. Yes. So when you're thinking about your self-care and loving yourself, you do not have to 
uh, put up with people treating you any type of way. And you, you said, no. no, that's, I, I don't allow that in my life. Say it out loud. I'm Say it out loud. Yeah. they are going out bad for you, but you have to put up, have some barriers and limitations to what you allow into your life as a single yes. woman, a married woman, engaged woman. As any woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it came, it went out of my head for a second, but you also have to demonstrate how to treat yourself. I'll give you an example. Valentine's Day is a perfect example, especially since it just passed. Um, what I used to do, and I did this for years, I used to send myself flowers or a cookie bouquet every year. And some people were like, oh, that's kind of, you know, I can't believe you do that to your, for yourself. That's kind of, isn't that kind of, you know, it's kind of awesome, actually, because it's for me, it's to me, from me. I usually put some little funky little something on the card. Um, Valentine's Day, you know, is coming, but I also used to always schedule one or two throughout the year that I'd forget about. Um, so when I'd be at work, I might get flowers or I'd get a cookie bouquet or whatever it is I schedule to send to myself. Mm -hmm. And again, always I put something fun or funky on the card, you know, to Miss Fabulous for her fabulousness or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But by doing that, people see how you're treating yourself. Yes. And they're like, oh, you, I mean, I always got mixed reviews. Like some people were like, oh, and other people were like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I can't believe you do that. So by demonstrating to other people, it doesn't necessarily have to cost money. It can be, you know, something that you do that you sit up on your desk, whatever it is. But by demonstrating how you treat you, mm -hmm. it also clues other people in, especially strangers, people who aren't around you every day, because even work people are strangers in mm -hmm. a way, mm -hmm. but people who don't see you all the time, by demonstrating how you love you, mm -hmm. not only does, right, not only does mm -hmm. it give them ideas for themselves, but it's like, oh, they really get to know you, and they're like, oh, no, Leslie would never do that for, you know, because she does this for herself, or she's, the, and they really get a mindset of your mindset, and how you are, how that giving is of you, and it's just, it's such a great way to say it without saying it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you just led us right into something that I wanted to talk about, which is some ways you can show yourself love. Um, your single sister self, how, how do you show yourself love? I know one of the ways for me, how I feel luxurious and love to spoil myself is a nice hot bubble bath. Hmm. That is, that's one of those things that don't cost you, well, maybe cost you pennies to get bubble bath right. from scented oils, but you, you should know what, what spoils you. How do you spoil yes. yourself? And that's one of the ways. There's nothing like getting in that bubble bath with the little bath pillow in the back and just relaxing and not having my phone, not having my, oh. you know, iPad. It is so relaxing. And that is one of the things that I like to do for myself. Mm -hmm. I have reincorporated, like most of you out there listening, I have crazy schedule, this project, that project, running here, running there. I have intentionally learned to settle down you know, get, I've gotten back into reading before I go to bed at night, just settling nice. in and, you know, come in, writing in my journal. So th those are some ways that I relax, have downtime and show myself love. What mm -hmm. are some of the ways that you do that, Leslie? I chant, so chant slash meditate. I also, um, also like, um, incense and scented oils and things like that around the house as well and honestly the way I'm good to me is to give myself those lazy moments I am a sucker for tv and movies and that's that's like that I get my life from just being a lump on the sofa and just watching catching up on shows or watching a movie like perfect example is this weekend I was in the mood for black and white movies I don't know why I don't know where it came from but that's what I wanted to do and so I gave myself permission, which is another thing you got to do. 
give mm-hmm. yourself permission. And I gave myself permission to just, right, yeah. to just be a lump. And I just went from movie to movie to movie. And I'd like pick an, an actor in one. It's like, okay, well, what's the movie that that one did that I like? And let me go to, the, I mean, so it was like this, it became a theme, but that's what I mean. Like that's, that is how I love me. That is one of the things that truly gives me life. That and nice restaurants. <laughs> mm-hmm. Going out to a dinner with cloth tablecloths, someone else waiting on me, um, trying to make sure I am enjoying the environment, making sure that my needs are met. Um, That is what gives me joy. So I, from like totally no money to with the incense and the things around the house to an extravagant dinner. Those are how I always, you know, I'm always good to myself. And let me say this single sisters, when you're trying to find um, things that you find joy in, maybe you have a friend or, you know, an acquaintance and they have a bucket list to have places you want to go. Absolutely. And I'm bringing this up because I know that Leslie always wanted to do the break room. <laughs> That's where you go in and you can bang up a car, bang up glasses. And I was like, oh. I want to go, me too, me too. <laughs> and it was so exhilarating to just be in that room with all this gear on and just smash stuff up. Nothing that I ever have to do again, but I can right. say, wow, I did it. Yeah. And, and I did that because she had mentioned it and I was in the atmosphere. And I was like, oh, I'll try it. I want to do that. So yeah. sometimes step outside of your boundaries and, you know, and, Enjoy some different things or new things. Never seen a comedy, go to the comedy show. Never exactly. seen the opera, go to the opera. It's still all a part of loving yourself and showing yourself new experiences. And you might discover something you love. I mean, I love classic cars. I didn't realize how much I did until a friend years ago invited me to the Concours de Legons. And now I, I mean, I still haven't been able to make it every year because it's a little pricey, but I definitely look out for it. And on years when things are cool, I like to feel like I went last year. And so I didn't realize um, uh, how much something I kind of like really has a place. And, And that also is a great way to find your people because as a single person, not only is it hard, especially once you get to a certain age, it's hard to meet the men you want to date but also girlfriends, we can't forget how badly and and how much we need our girlfriends. And sometimes through aging or just moving or whatever life does, it it siphons them off. Sometimes they just trickle out. And next thing you do, you know, you wake up and you're like, I don't have any girlfriends. Like, where did all my girlfriends go? So by finding your people, be it art or cooking Mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you do, maybe even just as a hobby, it doesn't have to be something you do, but it can be a hobby. It can be an interest. It could be something that you're like, you know, one of these days I'm a X, Y, Z, I'm just fill in the blank. Just go check it out. There are meetups. There's all kinds of stuff. And like Sherry was saying, you know, just find a friend, find a friend and see what they're into and just don't discount it. Don't don't count it out. I'm not a big drinker, but I have a friend that loves going to wineries. And I do love going to wineries, but she just loves wineries. Mm-hmm. Go. You never, ever know what you're going to discover and what you're going to find because it's all out there, but it's not going to come to you on your sofa in, in, in the house. It's just not going to happen. So. <laughs> and, and I know you said it's as you get older, it might be a little more difficult, but I was yeah. talking to my 20 year old niece. She'll be 21 in a couple of weeks. And she was like, I share, you know, I don't have a lot of friends like you. This and that, you know, the girls are Philadelphia is so flaky but I'm like look so what are you doing and one of the things you just said I mentioned to her go on meetup and my sister goes girl that people are crazy out there you do not go to an isolated place first of all a meetup might be through zoom a meetup you sometimes they meet up at restaurants or if you're into art and it's an art to meet up you meet up at an art gallery but like you said people are not going to just come Hey, knock, knock, I'm here, you're <laughs> hey. afraid. You've got to put some effort into it. And this yeah. is still, we're going back to, this is self-care and self-love for yourself yeah. because you're getting out there and you're 
enjoying life. Yeah, because, and, and it should be the things that you want to do. It's great to join your friends on things and, um, you know, try new things, but maybe you're trying it because you just want to hang out with your friends. Really think about the things that give you joy. And it doesn't have to be a bunch of stuff. If it's just, again, no judgment. And that's where we get hung up. We start judging that, you know, my friend is into this and this and this and this and this, and I just like this. Okay, then do that. Because if you do that with your whole heart, you will truly get your life. And that's all that matters. It doesn't, you don't have to have a bazillion friends. You don't have to go to a bazillion places. You have to, if you are a quiet spirit and a quiet soul, that's allowed because Mm -hmm. there are introverts. We are introverts. I won't say we, me and Sherry, but me and you out there are introverts masquerading as extroverts because the world is designed for extroverts. So when you no can, extroverts, right, <laughs> right, <I shouldn't> look, <laughs> right, exactly. See, and that's and that's the other thing. I'm glad you said that because that's the other thing introverts need to do. Mm-hmm. You have to or try to surround yourself with a couple. Don't because too many it'll, it'll drive you crazy. But mm-hmm. <laughs> build, bake in some extroverted friends. Because they actually serve as your buffer. They really do. They get you out there and then they're right exactly. They're doing the and you're out here like, (laughs) but you're there. (laughs) You're in it. So allow yourself those those ways, you know, to get out in there. Because yeah, I, I hear you. I know some of you are like, you know, I'm I'm afraid of COVID or I'm an introvert or whatever it is, but create your own safety bubble, create your own safe zone and and give even yourself a safe word. I know for me, when I can't take any more stimuli or when I've had a lot of interaction with people, I will literally use the verbiage, I am at my people limit. I will say goodbye to my friends and I will go on my merry way. Now, mm-hmm. some of my friends in the past have, oh, you always got to go and you this. Don't worry about any of that. You're taking care of you. And first. you know what, Leslie? We're going back to what you initially said. You're mm-hmm. speaking your truth. You're speaking That's your truth. Your truth. Exactly. Because the friends who love you, they'll be like, okay. I'll see you later. And they're going to do what they're going to do. Because I assure you, other people, they're going to do them. They Mm -hmm. are not (laughs) going to adjust. So you shouldn't either, whatever that looks like. So yeah, find that trigger word, that trigger phrase, the, what the teamwork with a friend. I have friends that use sign language when they're ready to go. I mean, just Mm -hmm. find that thing that works for you to create your safe bubble and just be out, just get out there in the world because being isolated too is not good for your soul in Mm -hmm. any way. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple other things I wanted us to hit on real quick. I know this time is going so fast. I I remember years ago, I went to hear this millionaire speak. It was a a black man. And he was saying, no no romance without finance. Mm. I'm gonna throw out there, ladies, get your finances together if they Mm -hmm. are not already this is not the platform to talk about that but you want to be you want to be financially right when you're in a relationship that's a part of having your overall self right so just work work, have those finances right um and I also wanted to talk about uh, uh manifestations using um Look in your mirror. I am beautiful. I am loved. Mm. Manifestation is not the word I'm looking for. What is it, Leslie? Affirmations. Thank you. It <laughs> <laughs> is not what I'm looking for. Uh, you can use them too. You can, yes. you can yeah, get the, those. The, there are ink pens that people write on the cars for like graduations and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That works great on your mirror. I have them on my mirror right now. You can write on your mirror if you don't want to, you know, if you can't remember them, write a phrase on your mirror that is your affirmation. So speak loving words of affirmation to yourself. Have them around your house, have them on your mirror, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
and those just reiterate, you know, your subconscious. And another thing that I love to talk about are vision boards. Mm -hmm. How many of you out there have created a vision board before? And what is a vision board, Leslie? A vision board is putting your life in pictures and not your present life, but the life you want to live. And I'll go one step further. A vision board is amazing because it really gives you a visual example of the life you want to be in. But, um, but you can do that and then also write out your life as if you're living it. Um, already so i wake up every morning at 6 a.m and i go downstairs to my gourmet kitchen and i prepare the coffee i love and i get into my infinity qx 60 and i drive to my office that sits with a view of, of big picture windows with a view of the ocean and Speak as if this is how your day looks and your life looks. I kiss my husband or wife or partner goodbye every day. So write it out. That's a graphical representation. So exactly. get old magazines or print yep. out stuff from the internet. If you want that card, cut it out, put it up on your vision board. Yes. If you want that soulmate, get, cut out that man, put it on your vision board. If you want that new job, job and put the name of it so looking at this stuff again is stimulating yes. your subconscious mind and you want exactly. to make it as graphical as possible you can yep. make it on a large cardboard you yeah. can make it on a small one yeah and i always suggest that you take a picture of it so if you're mm -hmm. in the bank line i don't see anybody standing the bank line anymore grocery store wherever <laughs> you can look at it no, yeah, it's good, it's good you say that. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because the other thing too is don't do an electronic vision board. Like really touch the paper, cut it out, paste it on, and then take a picture of it. So that's your electronic representation because there's something about our brains that connect when we touch it. And so it gets it out of your brain and it actually, you're already actually doing it when you use that, when you go that route. Um, it's just it's a, it's a psychological th psychological thing that happens in our brain when you actually put it into action in that way. But when you do it electronically, there's a little bit of a hiccup. So, you know, if I can add to the vision board situation, just mm -hmm. don't do it electronically if you can help it. <laughs> so, uh, a, a couple last things. Uh, okay. One thing I wanted to address, I wrote it down. I know you might be saying you're lonely, and what can you do about it? You know, we talked about get out there, you all, embrace life, enjoy. In any life, I feel like there's going to be some loneliness, but yeah. you have the capability to not make that a permanent thing. Yeah. Are you ready for unconditional love? Find your truth, find yourself, work on your better self first. Yeah. This is a question, Leslie, that someone asked me. So I'm going to see how you want to answer this. Okay. They said, what do you do about being in a funk? Because you really want to be in love or at least in a good relationship with someone. I know we kind of talked about around that, but what's something straightforward you would say? Well, I would again say, I'd, I'd have to first echo that you need to first be in a good relationship with yourself. So I would always start, start there. <laughs> like we are talking external. If we are talking external, I would say go where the people you want to meet are. So again, we don't want to make too many rules or put any any too many qualifiers on it because you you actually whittle down <laughs> your your odds. But if you are looking for someone that is educated, that has a that makes a certain amount uh, for a living and all that. Figure out, I mean, it might take a little bit of homework, but figure out where they are and go where they are. Like go through that, you know, that uh, up and coming bar or, or restaurant or event or whatever it is and see where they are. Because again, they're not gonna find you. So you want to put yourself in the area of the people that you wanna be around. And in all that looking, just make sure that you have worked on yourself and you're oh, where yeah. you want to be. Yeah, because they can tell. 
<laughs> they can tell if you're a visitor in their land. So make sure that you have taken care of you first. What about soul love for the single sister looking for a good single brother? Mm. Any last minute words on that? And <laughs> I want to I want to say that because I know you wrote this article. It's called, I'm looking at it now, five ground rules for your relationship to be all that it, all that it can be. Yes. And you say, how do you have the relationship you always wanted? What can you do to either attract or improve your romantic relationships? Here are five simple things that you can do. I know it's on your website, but mm -hmm. can you hit on those five things real quick? Or I can, I have, I printed it out right here. Well, I was going to say, I don't have it in front of me right this okay. moment, but I know for one, one of the biggest things is to be the person you want in the relationship. That's mm -hmm. a huge one because so often we talk about how I wish my, you know, my mate did this, that, and the other thing, but are you doing it? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and women too, you know, I'm going to speak to uh, us as women real quick. Bottom line, the old complaints, please throw them out the window, the toilet seat up or down mm -hmm. and these kinds of things, these little nitpicky little things that we grew up hearing, we grew up saying, we've been saying, please throw that out the window. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry about that. Okay, so that was that was the first thing you said. You must yep. be the person you want in your life. It's never too late to become the person you want. Never. Number two, you said for a relationship to be the, all that it can be, you must have trust and honesty above all else, even yes. if it hurts a little yes. bit. Yes. You have to learn how to argue. You have to learn how to discuss things with your partner. And there is a safe way to argue. And so again, that's a whole other thing. Okay. I won't get into detail with that, but you learn how to argue with each other. And then number three of the five was be an active participant in the relationship. Most of us say we want a 50-50 love, but let's be real. Some days is 60-40, <laughs> some days is 70-30. It sounds like so 10 it is 90 10, man. It's just, you know, that's that's how life goes, right? For reals. I mean, that's that's think about think about your relationship the way you discovered life is. Life is never a hundred percent. It's never even 50-50. It's just not fair. So just recognize that, you know, even a relationship, sometimes you're gonna carry the heavy load and sometimes your partner will. And I like when you said that when you put your partner's needs before your own, and in parentheses, you said, I don't mean never do anything for yourself. But when you do that, do that, you take the focus off of yourself and you're both doing it, then your needs are met anyway. Yeah. And that has to be a mutual discussion. That has to be, you know, you both have committed to doing that. And again, it's not, that doesn't mean not doing things for yourself. It just means you know, you're not focusing on what they don't do. You're doing the things for them. Okay, I have to say that I love number four. Allow someone to love you. Ugh. Allow someone oh to gosh. love you. Right? You would think that would be a given. You would think we would just know how to do that. But no, you have to allow. Ladies, let them open your door. Yes, you can. We know you can. But should you? It's like the like we rule. Just because you can doesn't mean that you should. Okay? So let the men be the men in your life. And I know that's drifting one way because we got partners now and all this other stuff. But just let your partner, let the other person do for you. And say thank you. Even when it's not what you think or what you ask for what you should just say thank you have an attitude of gratitude it yes. goes so far in life and lastly your fifth ground rule for your relationship to be all that it can be is don't make a bunch of rules right yeah please don't you said um Love is organic, not orchestrated. Don't try to fit a square peg in a round hole. Just let it be. Just let it be. And you also suggested reading the five love languages by Gary Chapman. You said that yes. might be a helpful tool. Yes. 
Absolutely. <laughs> so there you have it, lady. <laughs> so love for the single sister. Enjoy. Any parting words, Les? I don't. I think we've said it all. I, I think I have to echo that sentiment of enjoy, you know, just do you be you and when you are being your most authentic self love will find you in all of its forms and i do know that a person's time is the most precious commodity that they own and with that we appreciate you tuning in and taking this hour with us and leslie's three parting words are go be do <laughs> it. thanks again bye-bye you all Baby, don't you, baby, don't you switch up the vibe. Hello. So what comes to mind for me when I hear soul love uh, of the single sister? I say being unapologetically me and you being unapologetically you in spite of our flaws, our imperfections, the judgments that we have about ourselves we are able to accept and embrace them all. Soul love reminds me of a godly love because God knows our thoughts. He knows our flaws, our imperfections, our baggage, our history. And in spite of all of that, he still loves us for who we are. And that's the kind of love that we need to have for ourselves, unconditional and unapologetic. So for the soul sister with self-love, I say we exude confidence and energy of self-love that is undeniable, that people will be attracted and we will manifest the love that we uh, are supposed to have. So happy self-love. Personally, for me, soul love, I think it should be, it should lead to the relationship where you're sharing, you're traveling, you're doing things together, you're learning from each other and you're sharing. But the soul love for the single sisters, I don't think they should count us out. And I think a lot of times, society, the media, and I see it all the time with their little subliminal messages, they're count, discounting the soul love of single black sisters. You see the commercials, you don't see us together as men and women, uh, black, black love, I don't see it. I see other races mixed in with us, which is fine, that, that, but that's not everyone's reality. The reality is I wanna see more of us for the single sister so that we can have things that we can do together. Show commercials with us skiing. I go on black ski trips and it's a lot of black people that are there. Show us interacting with each other, mingling, sharing ideas, discussing matters, but doing it with that soul love with a, another black individual. I, and I don't think that's wrong. I think of Michelle and Barack, how they started out and how they're still going. He said it's not without challenges, and she said the same thing, but you work together. Because anything worth having, you got to work at it. That's my two cents. Uh -huh.